Aditi, top ranked CSI on it in the top ten ranks. She went ahead to qualify the interviews in top-notch labs such as JNCSR, IASC, and CCNB. After much thinking, she went ahead and chose IASC. But after working there for two years in her PhD program, she left it. Similar stories we are seeing today on the internet where various Indians are making videos on YouTube saying that I left my PhD, I am leaving my PhD, there's something wrong and they're giving multiple reasons. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about why Indians are leaving PhD suddenly and what is wrong with PhD. Now let's get started with the first story which I told you of Aditi. She is not just the first person. In my last 18 years of career, I have seen every year multiple dropouts from PhD. But after COVID, it has increased. Well, there are multiple reasons. But one of the reasons is because we are Gen Z now. We are the Instagram generation where we lose attention every 60 seconds. And that's probably primary reason, one of the first reasons I would like to cite. Today, our attention span is not that long that we can dedicate seven hours of our prime youth years into something which gives us huge benefits. So probably that's what the Gen Z is thinking. But however, there are multiple reasons. The first reason of, is, of course, the Instagram uh, generation, which we are. Our attention span is less. We don't want to dedicate seven years while my uh, colleague is in a job and he grows in seven years, right? Now, the first thing, this obviously is financial burden. So what happens is when you do a PhD, your financial are, are stuck with the you know PhD stipend. And now that CSIR has come up with a new rule that you cannot do any part-time job during your PhD, you have to be full-time dedicated to your PhD. So if you, if you're found to do so, your PhD can be cancelled and you can be debarred to work in any lab. So that means PhD stipends are already un insufficient and you cannot add on to that with a part-time job. So the financial burden is huge and there's a lack of job security now after you have completed your PhD also. So that feedback which is coming in, which is making people feel that the opportunity cost, so there are two types of cost, right? One is the monetary cost, one is the opportunity cost. So the opportunity cost is very high. During the years spent doing, during PhD, the candidates if instead would have done something else, they would have earned more. That fear of missing out is there, right? And that is why it is very important for any PhD aspirant to know what they are up for and what to expect from a PhD. The problem is nobody guides you. Nobody tells you why exactly you should pursue a PhD and why exactly you should not pursue a PhD. So probably in the, my next video, I'll do that. But for now, since we started the story of why Indians are leaving this PhD, let me come to the second topic, second point under this video, and that is the mental health challenges. You see, there are seven years or five years of minimum work which you have to do under PhD. And the toxic work environment now that you have no experience of a corporate environment, the first time you're getting out of college and you start working, because you have no experience of a toxic work environment, you face unsupportive advisors, sometimes excessive workloads, sometimes academic politics, and this leads to mental health issues. And if you are mentally weak, PhD is not free. Sometimes there is loneliness and isolation because the whole world is, you know, out there celebrating New Year, but you are sitting in the lab working on your experiment. But nobody acknowledges or recognizes that fact. That also works in the negative direction and of course the high stress level. I was uh, talking to a cancer researcher the other day uh, in US and not just India, it's in US also. So it was Christmas and I was talking to her and she was talking to me from her lab. I asked, it's Christmas, so why are you not in your home celebrating? She said that there is work, so I have to be here. My um, you know, experiment is running, I cannot leave in mid midway. So the stress level is high. So as a life science student or life science professional, you should know that PhD is a stressful job. It's not just a course. It's a stressful job. So if you know what exactly to expect, then only you will go for a PhD. If you don't know, then you will leave midway. So first I started with the Instagram generation, reduced attention span. The second is a financial burden. The third is a mental health challenges. That is the reason people are leaving. And I think a majority of the government institutions have to frame policies so that this mental health thing is taken care of. The finances are taken care of. And now coming to the 
most important aspect this is misaligned expectations so what is happening with all of you is you feel if i qualify csir and go for a phd after that i'll get a good paying job while some of you when you used to get started with, with phd you start comparing with others who got a job already and they are getting probably high salary so you get disoriented right so your expectations get misaligned and that happens because there is a lack of clarity and that lack of clarity is because there is no mentor to guide see phd is all about sacrificing your young years to become something big in the future you cannot expect to be earning a lot of money right now and become a big scientist in the future so both are different right so this lack of clarity some students think that phd is just a piece of cake but it is not if you don't understand the stress of phd without fully understanding it if you get started the demand and rigor which is there that takes a toll on your health and then you start feeling that this is not for me the truth is you have to be mentally ready for phd and probably exams like csir it makes you that you know multiple rejection then one selection you know what is what you're up for and the next is miss match with the interest so sometimes you realize that the uh, in the middle midway you realize that the topic phd topic or the research area i chose i am no longer interested in that and that's one of the reason people leave to so choose the topic carefully don't choose something which is not going to be in the demand in the future now coming to the systemic issues in the system so in india or globally there are administrative inefficiencies and the stipend will come 6 months late so 6 months you are high end dry and then suddenly you are flush with cash right when you are flush with cash you go and buy i4 and then again you are high end dry so this is where it hurts moving ahead outdated curriculum limited resources many institutions have limited resources and that lack leads to a lack of advanced equipment lack of funding lack of collaboration opportunities and this leads to the frustration or this adds to the frustration now moving ahead i feel that there is a need for industry oriented phd so that the student is still working in a company and while he is doing his industry oriented phd i think quantum zyme is facilitating that and uh, many other companies are facilitating that we have to do that if we can facilitate it inter industry oriented phd so while he is in a job he is get doing his phd the funding body did not give the stipend and then uh, that person is engaged and he feels that okay he is earning also and he's, he got a phd that's the solution probably but hey this is not happening and that's one of the reasons people are feeling that they are missing out on opportunities and that is why they are leaving now coming to the societal pressure most of them in their prime years especially women are pressurized by their family to get married now, If you get married during your PhD, you have two babies to take care of, a new family, a husband, and PhD, right? So you are a stretched thin, and that is why you will have to choose in between your married life and your PhD. And most women are leaving their PhD for a married life. So that is where we are lagging. Now coming to the global competition. Globally, PhDs are getting better stipend, better opportunities, better infrastructure, better funding. So people think that okay, even though I'm in midway, I leave this and go abroad and get a better. that's also one of the reasons so the phd system in india i would not say is broken but needs to be fixed either we increase the stipend or we uh, and we of course take care of their mental health and stress and pressure we we need to reduce our uh, curriculum to 4 years instead of 5 years and we need to have industry oriented phd's we need to have mentors we don't need pi's now we need mentors we need students who are motivated to do research who feel that they will not lose on the opportunity side because the economy is booming jobs are there so you know if we have a clear path to phd and beyond students will not leave midway otherwise there will be many adithis who will leave their phd midway and india will lack into the the competitive research edge which we have today we are going to lose if our phd's start dropping like flies so i feel stipends need to be improved number 1 mentorship has to be provided reduce the stress and pressure reduce the number of years for phd enhance the industry collaboration so that they can have industry oriented phd's streamline the administration so that the stipends comes on time and probably we need to educate people about what is a phd first so that the expectation matches the reality thank you so much for watching this video i hope you found something helpful today please comment below what are what is your opinion why people are leaving phd's in between so that we can have a fruitful discussion and finally we can pass this on to the authorities and they can make change thank you take care